Hey, I'll, so, so when can I go home? <laughs> That's the neat part. You don't. Uh, what? This is your home. No, I I live like five minutes that way. And, and, uh, this is your home. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, people are playing the absolute life out of Power World right now all over the world. And as people play more, they progress further into the game, and with further progression comes further requirements. As this is a survival game at the end of the day at its core, and that means if you want to truly feel like you are progressing, you need to craft. And to craft the really important later game end game equipment and base parts too, you need a hell of a lot of some certain resources. So today we're going to talk about the best farming practices for a number of super important late game materials such as paldium, coal, and cement for the process of creating the highest grade of sphere in the game, the legendary spheres, pal metal, which is the highest grade of metal ingots in the game currently used for a lot of end game crafting, as well as sulfur, a main component of gunpowder and thus ammunition for all of your actual firearms. As all the end game weapons use ammo of course, and you need quite a bit of sulfur if you want a nice supply of it. Then we'll also talk about the best general methods for gaining gold as well, so that you can interact properly with the merchants around the world. Some of these things can be automated with bases, which makes it a lot easier, but other parts of this require pure farming, so we'll go over the best ways to do all of it for the resources that I've mentioned, which should help get you properly set up for the later stages of the game. First things first then, let's talk about pal metal. To make pal metal, you simply need ore and also paldium. As far as paldium goes, you can't really create a base in a location that farms it, and while you can use the crusher to turn stone into paldium, the exchange rate isn't great and the amount of time required is pretty nasty as well, so while it is technically automatable, you will generally need a lot more of it than you will have permanently running through this system, and when that time comes, the best way to actually farm it is dungeons. Any dungeon across the map, there are tons of them, but if you head into any of these dungeons, there will be at least one room with at least a couple of large paldium nodes. They look like the large stone or ore nodes in the open world, but with blue specks, and these contain an absolute buttload of paldium that you can mine manually compared to the little rocks of it that you can find outdoors. So basically, if you ever just need a a bunch of pallium, and you will at some point empty your pockets, go into one of these dungeons with a pickaxe, and collect a ton of it in no time flat. If you want to make this even faster, you can bring something like a Dig Toys, for example, which has a pal skill that you can unlock to significantly increase mining efficiency when in the party specifically, or any pal with the Mine Foreman passive skill to boost the player's mining efficiency. On top of that, if you want to do larger runs, you want a pal like King Paka in your party, who specifically will boost your weight limit with this pal skill unlocked, allowing you to carry more resources in a singular run. At the same time, it's worth noting that the best general money farm in the game for actual gold coins is also actually just doing high level dungeons. So if you're looking for loads of gold, and we'll be talking about a couple of reasons that's important a bit later on, then the real trick is just do dungeons appropriate for your level, then beeline the end boss to get to the reward chest at the end, which is where the majority of the gold is contained. As for the other main parts of pal metal, the ore, the best way to farm this is specifically a base that has two functions. It is a mining base, but it is a mining base located right around this location where there are a ton of ore nodes but also a ton of coal nodes too. We have a whole video pretty much going over the automation process of this specific base so you can get as much of these resources as you could ever need really. The ore being important for pal metal of course, but the coal being a required ingredient for the other crafting material of legendary spheres, the carbon fiber, which is actually required for a lot of endgame crafting too. Then we have sulfur as our next main target, which again is mainly used for gunpowder and thus ammunition for all the various guns within the game. You can find bits of this in dungeons around the game, but it is best farmed in the open world, but with the way that it spawns, it isn't really worth having a mining base exclusively for sulfur. Instead, your best bet is, like Pallium, to go over to their best natural spawn location and just mine a bunch of it at a time manually, with the best location that I found being right outside of the Eternal Pyre Tower entrance on the volcano to the western southwestern side of the map. Just follow this area a little bit north, and yes, it is hot weather here, so you do need heat resistance, but you should just find an absolute never-ending line of sulfur nodes that you can mine here, all of which will respawn every day or two of in-game time, so this is pretty reliable, really. Then we come to our next step of end-game resources, which is cement, and this is where things get a little bit awkward. Cement is needed for legendary spheres, as well as a lot of just general late-game crafting for getting your base up to shape, so you will want a hell of a lot of cement, and it's made from three other resources. The first is stone, which is you'd never really have a short supply of, as you can automate that extremely early on in the game. The second one is bones, which there is no way of legitimately automating, 
but there are some funky tricks that you can do. And then Pal Fluid, which has no automation method at all. When it comes to getting the bones then, they do drop from some specific pals, but there is a better way to get them than that. Every red jacketed wandering merchant within the game, you can find them in various locations all over the place. These guys will trade you one set of bones for some gold, a pretty fair offer, and they don't really have a limit to how many they can sell you at a time. As I mentioned earlier, you can farm large amounts of gold by just doing level appropriate dungeons, which you can then trade directly for bones for your cement mixing. That said, you can technically automate this by, well, capturing a red coated merchant, releasing them at your base so that you can buy from them at home in your base, then assigning some Vixie or Mao to your ranch, which can cause them to generate a small amount of gold automatically over time. It is far less and far less quick than doing dungeons as far as getting gold, but it is automatic, technically speaking. It's also worth noting that these merchants tend to sell various elemental organs too. So if you're ever severely lacking any of those, but have a pile of gold, that's a great way to fix the problem. Then the final ingredient for cement is going to be pal fluid. There's no way to automate this really. It isn't sold by the merchants either, sadly, even though most other similar materials are. But this one, generally speaking, just comes from lower level water type pals. And even all the way at max level, the best way that I found for farming pal fluids is actually to just round up and capture a bunch of these. Specifically, if you follow the coastline south on the Seabreeze Archipelago area down here, you'll just find loads of low level water pals, mostly celery. And you'd want to specifically catch them over killing them, especially if you are later game, you can use higher tier pal spheres that can make it a 100% chance even before combat, making it nice and easy. And so you can just ride a flying mount up the coast, capturing a bunch of pals in a line. The reason that we specifically capture them is a bit grim, but you get a set of rewards, including pal fluids when you capture pals, the same that you would get for killing them. But then because you captured them, you can then take the pals back out of your box and butcher them immediately with the butcher knife, which permanently kills them, but gives you a second roll at rewards from the same pal, basically just doubling your actual turnover here. It's extremely concerning, sure, but also it's just the most efficient way to do what we're trying to do here. Trust me, I feel bad, but also well, pal fluid. That pretty much covers all the base resources then. Stone, bone, and pal fluid give you cement. Cement combined with the coal from the automated base, the ore from the automated base, as well as the big hefty palladium node farming that you can do in any dungeon across the game will get you a pretty consistent source of actually making legendary pal spheres, as well as just easing the process of creating later base building materials or even things like the legendary equipment you can get in the end game, which can cost frankly quite ludicrous amounts of resources. But once your automation is set up, it gets a hell of a lot easier. Then of course, we also talked about where you can get just a buttload of sulfur, and that's realistically the only other material that you need in mass amounts by the late game. A lot of the earlier things that aren't already covered, a lot of the later stuff is just an amalgamation of the earlier materials, but done in different ways. But sulfur can't really be effectively automated at all, and is a massive requirement for anyone who wants to use guns properly, which again, are simply the best player weapons that aren't in the game, especially once you start to get the legendary versions of them, which can eat through your ammo like crazy. So you really do want to at least know how and where to farm all of these resources by the time you hit the late game, even if you don't copy my exact strategies or locations. I hope you've all enjoyed this then, and hopefully this helps you get set up for the later stages of your journey within Pal World, never having to worry about where to find a resource again. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye